This is the Marion County Courthouse in Indianapolis. This photograph taken right around 1905 and you can see how sharp the resolution is for such an early time period. So it begs the question If I fast forward 20 years to the construction of the World War Memorial in Indianapolis and look for construction photos, all I find is a whited out, poorly put together photograph. Why weren't they documenting these processes at building these structures at that period of time? Why weren't they taking higher resolution photos. These are all questions that need to be asked. And yes, this was the only photo I could find of the construction process of this war memorial. And folks, I want you to strap in and buckle up. Let's dive into Indianapolis. And we begin the visuals with a 200-year-old vision of what Indianapolis once looked like. At least that's what we're expected to believe. What Indianapolis actually looked like, we will, we will begin to see as we roll through these visuals. Of course, you see the stonework and the arches. Population about 200,000 in 1904. Not a small city, and we will be looking at the state capital as well. You can see modern day, we're just under a million. Um, 1840, they began, looks like taking census, we are told, 2,600. So you can see the growth process in here. And really, uh, it's again industry um, attributing, uh, attributed to the, the growth of. Uh, Indianapolis, meat packing, things of that nature. And we have the canal narrative um, as well as uh, the railroad narrative, all a major part of uh, Indianapolis. The canal, again, a failed venture, costing the state all sorts of money. And then the railroad coming in and really kicking off uh, the growth which is the same pattern that we see everywhere. This is the Union Station Railroad. So in 1888, we're meant to believe that they're building these type of structures um, to be used as a station, a railroad station. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. There's no uh, practicality in that. And of course, we'll be told that we had all sorts of German and Irish immigrants that came over with their skill set and their architectural vision and that that's what explains why we're seeing it here as well but I don't buy that I think uh, I think what we're looking at is um, a previous civilization that was basically uh, grafted onto and the uh, new inheritors civilization came in and repurposed much of this destroyed it over time it just there's, to me, there's no logical explanation for the um, the way these things were built at that time period. And coming from the perspective of someone who has built a lot of things, um, and I, I do see those comments as well from tradespeople that do the actual physical work. Um, the, the improbability and the impossibility of it all seems to seep through as we take a closer look at it. And of course, there's always the question of supply and manufacturing of these uh, materials that were used on these structures. Um, also, the 
the thin backstory we get on so many of these when it comes to the architects. The process, the way that many of these buildings were constructed, whether it be with uh, prisoners or slaves, or uh, just the architect. In many cases, they'll tell you just the architect built it, or they'll tell you um, a group of nuns built this, and, and that's really the end of the story, and they don't expect most people to dig any deeper into their explanations. Because when you begin to dig deeper, you start to realize um, the story falls apart. Like you're in the outer reaches of a, of a game and it starts glitching because the code hasn't been written for that. I feel like we're glitching our uh, reality with this research. Now we're looking at a series of buildings that were supposedly constructed to house the insane. They use such terms as feeble-minded, insane, incurably insane. This became a blind uh, home for the blind. This is really the uh, Piasse de Resistance, pardon my accent, but you know what I mean. This is the asylum in Indianapolis. Let's take a broader view of it. Not a great postcard. I only have a few here of this structure as well. Again, why is this such a phantom? Why are these uh, buildings not more well documented than they are? get a sense of it though, the size and scale. Here's a uh, drawing. So very, very abnormally large. You have a fountain out front too. Looking like two fountains. That's interesting because I don't know if the fountains are here at this period. Fountains again have been, it has been suggested part of the entire energetics of the old world structures. So the insane asylum narrative, heavy in Indianapolis. This would be a bear pit in a park. It's kind of odd. It's looking de destroyed, really, this part here. Come to the Federal Building, the Birch Bay Federal Building. And they give us a 1902 to 1905 timeline, so a three-year timeline to build this at the early in the very early years of the 20th century. Then we look at the interior of such a structure. This is all mosaic tile here on the ceiling. They must have brought the Italians over for that. And just check out the detailing in this uh, high quality photograph of the coffered ceilings. And of course you get the column capitals coming down the walls not really what you'd think of. You can just imagine if this was proposed modern day to build a federal building in such a manner. We can't even come close to it. And I'm saying can't because most people, a lot of people think it's just a won't. It's a um, matter of money and I, I'm suggesting that it's, it, there's much more to it than that. I don't think we can. The symmetry, the precision, is all very very difficult to duplicate with these materials which is why it makes the official story so implausible I think I'm very much blown away by this research because growing up um, my impression of the American Midwest um, or really of any North American city um, these types of buildings really didn't factor in they were never highlighted or promoted as a part of our our history here in uh, North America, what they've tried to do. Um, this is the Scottish Rite Building, just the Scottish Rite Building, not to be confused with the temple. Uh, the only example of this I could find would have been an amazing structure. What they've tried to do is graft, again, a, uh, a history, an ugly history, nothing, a history that we can't be proud of. Uh, history filled with oppression, um, with no beaut beautification really of any sort. All of this has sort of just been swept under the rug. So why do they m want to make us feel like um, we are less 
than we actually are. Well, how does that work in their favor? But really, the question is, how doesn't that work in their favor? Really, it, it takes away our power. And when we, when we come out of our power, um, we are so much more easily manipulated, persuaded, right? This is supposedly from 1854. Alright, the public library having this sort of statue work. Really not making any sense. You just have to think about the, the impression that Hollywood tries to give of, uh, of um, us and of America, but really of all of us. You know. Really simple and stupid beginnings is, is what they're kind of telling us basically that we need governing you know there's a we're a wild and crazy bunch that would never get along with each other if we didn't have the proper governing or governance I'm, I'm not really advocating for anarchy in any way they always use the, the term anarchy to describe chaos as well those have seemed to have become a symbiotic but really it, what it is is uh more of a responsibility at the individual level as a society would be uh, I think a much more healthy society and alleviate a lot of the problems of course these problems have been um, heaped upon us as a species through the manipulative 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 sorry um, deceptions not to mention, so so the lies of history, the lies of the false perception of who and what we are, um, and the way that we interact with each other, is all based on a misunderstanding, miscommunication, mis all of these things. So that's part of the psychological war that rages on. But I'd also like to bring up the control at, at a physical level. Um, you can go right back to implementation of uh, alcoholism. Um, we can look at um, refined foods, sugars, refined sugar, um, candy. Um, a lot of these things, I know Michelle Gibson's done a bit of research on that too. I'll see if I can find uh, a link for you. And, and then it gets really serious after World War I when we have the uh, technologies being utilized against us, the television. The radio certainly was used as a means of uh, control. And then, of course, additives in our food get into the whole uh, Harma situation. And you have to wonder if all of these we hadn't been subjected to fluoride in the water, of course, aluminum, metals. If we hadn't been subjected to all of these things, um, how clearly would we be able to see our true past? So these are things I think about sometimes. Yet another fantastic interior. So many of these are actually hard to keep up with their names. But I'd like to bring you the visuals and make sure you get a look at them. The St. Joan of Arc. Interesting, not looking too spectacular, but still looking very old world. And we have a look at the interior of the St. Joan of Arc. And it's all, all matching um, architecture, finish work, all looking very much like the old world. Looking at the city hall here, another uh, one of those big rectangular battery looking structures. And then as we get a bit of a closer look at the, the front entry, let's look back here. 
very unique and interesting. A uh, quick shot of the interior. You can see the tile work, spectacular, perfect tile work down there. Ask any tile setter. I mean, what what it would take to build this. And the, of course, tile setters these days have access to all these uh, fancy blades and you know, a hundred years of. Uh, technology supposedly moving forward, right? So what kind of access do they have back then to tools to build these types of things? And how, what was the quality of these tools? What was the accuracy and precision of the tools that they used? The city market. Interesting story attached with this as well. This is a link from what lies beneath or only in your state.com, sorry. What lies beneath one of Indiana's most popular markets may surprise you. I'll put the link in the description. Just going to quickly roll through some modern day shots. And what does lie beneath the market are what they call the catacombs. Very interesting. Why would they have this in Indianapolis underneath uh, the marketplace in downtown? This would be the neighbor of the marketplace being over here. This would be the Tomlinson Hall. We'll take a closer look at that as we move forward with the slideshow. And there you have another shot of the two buildings side by side. This is supposedly a drawing. Um, well, it is a drawing, but it's supposed to have supposedly only a drawing. But did this structure exist? Certainly we have looked at uh, buildings in, the, in these towns, these cities, that look like this. You have to wonder how many no longer stand, how many were destroyed completely, turned into rubble. And what, could, what type of technology did they have to, to destroy these things? Well, we know they had dynamite, black powder and all the rest of it, been able to, to blow things up for a while. And then maybe that explains some of, some of these old great fires. I couldn't find a great fire in the Indianapolis narrative, but they did um, have some bad flooding in 1913, I believe. The Ohio River um, flooded badly, and Indianapolis getting the treatment in that situation. Now here we have this labeled the a, a building for the medical school. I also have it as an orphan asylum, as we'll see as we go on. The Columbia Club, and no shortage of gentlemen's clubs, of course, in in Indianapolis. Here's another Columbia Club. Let's take a look. Again, we have a nice photograph. It starts to blur, but you really get a sense, and this one still stands. Quite the building, quite the structure. There's a better look at the Columbia Club. Quite a nice photo giving us a real sense of the really over the top detail. Do you, I don't really don't think that we could uh, duplicate this facade here in the modern day. And if we did it, it would be such a monumental feat that it would be, uh, or it should be, the highlight of every newsreel, certainly in the country. And I had this photo attached to the uh, Columbia Hall. I don't know. It's probably in a church nearby, but I wanted to include it. We have Crown Hill. Why on earth would you build such a thing? Here's modern day. Beautiful. Almost really, it's very seamless, this work. And keep in mind how old that is. We're looking at a very old photograph here in a modern day, and this thing hasn't aged at all. We're still in that cemetery area, and we're looking at the chapel of the cemetery now, Crown Hill. And if you like these videos, don't forget to like them. Give me the thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so. I'm, uh, doing my best to bring you as much content as possible. I've got a lot of files, a lot of visuals for that I really want to share. So, And of course, if you feel the uh, need or urge to comment, 
happy, please, please feel free. I always enjoy the interaction in the comment section. Many people from these areas have uh, much to add to the story. I'm no expert on the region. I'm really just bringing you the visuals and some of my thoughts and ideas. This looking like ancient Egypt, what we have termed ancient Egypt. There really is so much in Indianapolis. Quite a large file in this situation as well. There's the hospital again. And St. Vincent's Hospital here, interesting with the rounded fronts. Romanesque. A veteran's hospital. So many of those soldiers and sailors hospitals, veterans hospitals, uh, all built to house um, soldiers that survived the wars. Hmm. You have to wonder really how sinister some of these uh, organizations and programs may have been behind the scenes, behind closed doors, secretive, secretively. This is Hotel Claypool. Here we have the Lincoln Hotel. Up here it's saying Commercial Club. Is this yet another building for the Commercial Club? I don't even know what the Commercial Club is. If anyone knows, please enlighten me. The Denison Hotel. Very interesting looking old world structure. We're told this is also the Denison Hotel. It doesn't look the same. Not really different structure. You get this a lot when you do the research as well. You find multiple names, multiple buildings with the same name. To me it feels like a laziness. This is the Denison again. The one we saw on the postcard. You can see the streetcars in full effect, of course, in Indianapolis. And a quick shot of the Denison on the interior just to remind you of how ornate the interiors were on these structures that were built at supposedly such an early time period and we didn't really have the means we do have today at our disposal. So the English Hotel, um, the theater, the English Hotel and Opera House stood from 1880 until 1948 and they felt the need, felt the need to tear it down. Hotel Grand, very early time period as well. Very early time period, and you can see again the stairs going down to a lower level. Why on earth would you build it that way? Maybe I don't know much about the climate in Indianapolis, but I assume that they have all sorts of weather um, not uh, conducive to having this type of situation right up against your building. Correct me if I'm wrong. This one I really, really love, the Imperial Hotel. I really wish I could find more on it. It's a, to me, it's a jaw dropper, just the way it uh, was put together. And then it's again one of those things that begs the question: Why would a building like this not be celebrated in the uh, in the annals of Indianapolis and in American architecture? Why why do they have to bury something like this? Well, I think we know why. The Hotel Merritt Apartment, or a Merritt Apartment Hotel. Looks like a, one of the fire halls. It could be New World. Back there kind of tells me Old World, though. So you have to wonder. Giving it a bit of a false front look. I've mentioned that whole false front concept, too, the Old Wild West and the false front. I think there's symbolism in that uh, phrasing. And I think what we've been giving, uh, of the story we've been giving of history in general is a false front. And I think they're telling us. Because these buildings supposedly existed at the same time those false front buildings did. So there's a real disconnect there between uh, what we're seeing and what we're told was the uh, the norm for the day.
Okay, this. If we go back into the distance here and see this dome. Supposedly the old International Order of Odd Fellows building. And it really is a stunner. Um, I don't, again, know why. I do know why, but I don't know why these types of buildings would not be uh, blown up. These photographs would be blown up and put on walls of schools and uh, museums, local museums, things like that, right? Another International Odd Fellows building. You see the, what look like heads, different heads, maybe each one. Lion, lion, these two are the same. The Knights of Pythias, also present in Indianapolis. Don't hear much about these guys as much as the other guys, but we have the amazing what we might call flat iron building, triangular shape, Knights of Pythias building. Manor Core Hall. Here we have a some work being done on it. Probably actually this would be the demolition of the Manor Core Hall. And you can see the daunting task ahead of these guys. Some shots of the interior before it was torn down. The Magnolia Block. Now here is an older photo of the Magnolia Block. Let's take a, let's examine this one. I think this is really good, really important for us to do to understand the research. Let's look here and here. And we see the difference now on what's been done here. And they put a rectang rectangular window in each uh, opening. So they're taking taking the circular windows, looking like a bit of a cymatic pattern there. They also chop it off here. This is almost looking like a crown. They had to get rid of this part, of course, didn't they? They chopped off, they decapitated it. And you can see they flattened it off. And like, like I've uh, mentioned in other videos, I think this was going on with many of these old structures. Some in many cases to the point where they just look like a rectangular brick box. And this would be that that area, or that building on fire, 1916. So the Marion County Courthouse. And as I do a search for this building, you'll find, and I urge you to try it as well, you'll find how difficult it is to find any information on the structure. They're really trying to bury what they did to it. It was demolished in the 70s. And they're really trying to erase this another generation or so. They hope, probably hope to erase all memory of it. But we're here, and we won't let that happen. County jail looking like a castle. Who builds a county jail like this? Not that practical. Would have taken a while. Probably had all these prisoners waiting for their rooms. Probably couldn't wait to get in there. <laughs> Alright. Here is an old Masonic Hall. Supposedly. Drawing. Here is a Masonic Temple. And we come to it at last the Scottish Rite Cathedral. And as we quickly hop over to Wikipedia, we find that this was built between 1927 and 1929, and it only cost $2.5 million at that time period. Right before the crash, it looks like they got it in. Are you ready for the next one? This would be the interior of the Scottish Rite Cathedral. All calling all woodworkers. Anyone out there doing woodwork? Let me know what you think of this. What do we have in each section? There's some sort of pattern. Some sort of, uh, almost like a balustrade coming off the ceiling. Coffering. I don't know. This is uh, a stunner. Absolute stunner. Beautiful. There it is from the other angle. Remember, two years. It only took them two years. This is basically what we might consider a European European cathedral that uh, that they often attribute, you know, 100 years to building, maybe 50. 
They're trying to tell us in 1929, 27 to 29, they built this structure in Indianapolis. Of course, they neglected to take any photographs whatsoever of the construction process, because I couldn't find any in the, in the late 20s. Here you have the front entry. We'll take a closer look at this as well as we move forward. Take a look at the ceilings again, the detail, level of detail and color on the ceiling. I don't even know what that is. Is that painted? Is that paper? Is that... I really don't even know what the texture is there. Hard to tell. You have that cathedral style woodwork. Stonework. Look at the stonework. Here we can get a nice... Well, you get a... First of all, you get a look at the floor, how perfect that is. Then you can really soak in the ceiling here. Is that some sort of tin? Some metal? Two years, you say? Hmm. A great place to get married. And of course, let's look at that again, with the wedding in the background. And the lights are not so bright, so... Ooh, I really, really, really am drawn to this ceiling, this room. But let's zone in a little bit closer on what we saw between the two front doors of this cathedral. Here we're looking at the double-headed eagle. Now, some people think was this the was this the old symbol of the symbol of the old world uh, civilizations? Um, did they hijack the symbol? Other people think it's just the uh, controllers and usurpers that use this symbol. Here we have three bound up men. And I think this, this is really speaking volumes here. Right, humanity tied up underneath the double-headed eagle. Couldn't be more clear than that, really. Definitely want to check this place out if you go to Indianapolis. And there again is that... Uh, that ceiling in that room. The Scottish Rite Cathedral. And just when you thought we might be finished with the Masonic buildings, we are not. Here's another one. All but erased from history. Let's take a closer look and soak that in. There you have the dating, Masonic dating process, which is a little different than what we might be used to. Dentists, of course. This looking like graffiti, really. You think about it, it's the architecture and then the day-to-day -day is certainly not uh, part of the same civilization. I think these were inherited. And one more back of modern day for the cathedral, just a reminder. And we move on. This is the Metropolitan Hall. Take a look at the ornamentation up here. You're telling me that doesn't remind you of Bavaria. Spectacular building. No longer stands, of course. They did all sorts of plays and theatrics in there. That's what they built those structures for, for these types of plays. That's what they try to tell us. I don't think so. I think it's from an old civilization. The Anatheum. The Murat Shrine, very interesting, silly. We've seen this pop up in our research in other areas. Helena, Montana had a strange temple in a similar styling. Here's the interior. Again, the level of detail in the ceiling. Modernized, no doubt, right? But you still can get a sense of it. Having the, looking like the copper dome in the middle here as well. So kind of a contradiction in styles between the two. And there's a good view of what it once looked like. All right, this is the National Bank. A nice crisp photo again from an early time period. So remember again, why couldn't we get higher resolution several decades later? Uh, I want to zoom in on this as well. This would be the 
arcade we're going to take a look at a little bit later but you can actually really get a good sense of the level of detail along the front here what the heck are these in each location what do you think those are amazing structure fantastic high quality photograph looking downright mythical the bank from the back side little circular action here felt like they wanted to add the circle could just close this off in a straight line and expedite the process and there's that front entry again and there's that odd fellows hall I was talking about I showed the photograph earlier this would be a rendering letting us know that the odd fellows had quite the nice clubhouse and I've mentioned this one as well. Um, they're calling it an orphan's asylum here. They also called it a college building. No doubt repurposing goes on several times. Nothing spectacular about this structure is really, but I wanted to highlight the orphan's asylum aspect of it. All right, on to the Pembroke Arcade, which I just showed you in much higher resolution. But you can like what a what an amazing structure here you have also a bit of a dome on top I didn't see in the last photo sorry correction that dome was there clear as day and the interior of the arcade skylight lots of natural light coming in one from another angle no doubt this is long gone Pembroke Arcade. And we are reminded that Indianapolis is a state capitol building and we are we are coming close to checking out the state capitol building. We'll go through a couple schools first. This will be the Austin Brown School. Yet another high school. Short Ridge High School. Okay. On to the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. This would be the dead center. They say Indianapolis was a planned city. They laid it out um, with the whole idea that in the future um, it would be filled in with these beautiful buildings, I guess. But there was an excavation done. And you can see what lies beneath here, street level. Look at the archway. This aligning what we with what we talked about with the marketplace by Tomlinson Hall. So much more to the story and much more below our feet, folks. And then here we get a construction photograph of the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, which was built right at the turn of the century. Of the 20th century, I should say. But they're passing this off as a photograph. That looks like photograph quality back there. This doesn't. This looks like a drawing to me. You tell me. Are you gonna attribute that to resolution? Does that look like a drawing? So what is it? Are we supposed? Is that a depiction of construction? They're drawing pictures of construction at that time period. Where's the logic there? Sure doesn't look like a photograph to me. All right, on to the state capitol. And as we jump over to Wikipedia, we see that there were several state houses that have a first, a second. Here's the second one right here. Unofficial state houses, they had a couple of those. Then we get to this one that we're looking at. Um, let's see here. An eight year construction time period. Here, we're told eight years. 1888, so 1880 to 1888, they built this sucker in the 1880s. Couple curious bits of information tied in with the um, construction story. The uh, cornerstone is a 10 ton block of limestone quarried granite. It says here the building was wired for electricity, even though Indianapolis did not yet have an electrical power grid. Are you serious? So, in anticipation that eventually they would hook everything up, so they just got ahead of it? Come on. And of course it's an old world stunner 
of course, with stunning interior. And you have the marbled columns, fancy capitals, sty skylight ceiling. Remember, 1880s, folks. 1880s. And less than 100,000 people in Indianapolis at that time. One of many magnificent structures to be found in Indianapolis. We're seeing that eagle pop up in a lot of places. Also seeing the rosettes in the arch, the underside of the arches, all too often theme that we see in all these old world structures. The underside of the dome. Paintings, which I suggest probably been painted over, depicting something a little bit more aligned with the historical narrative that we uh, have been given. And then we're looking up again to the underside of a dome. I don't think it's the dome, but another area of the state capitol. Beautiful structure, supposedly built in the 1880s. I suggest it has been standing for much longer than that. And we're going to look at a couple theaters now, and I, I certainly did not get all the theaters. There's quite a few of them. I tried to bring you a few, though. This is very strange. The Ambassador. Check out all the, the nodes on the front of this. Was this made to light up at night? This is the Repertory Theater. We're being told it was built in 1927. Just 1927. I don't see a start or finish to any of this. Uh, originally as a movie theater, supposedly. A movie palace. Oh, really? Huh. That's pretty ornate, don't you think? Buy that. That's less than 100 years old. Very interesting. Why would they have... Um, theater characters, but looking like something you'd more likely to see in a, th in a theater than a cinema type of situation. So, story pretty hazy there, and actually there isn't a lot of information on this place being built. Of course, here's interior. Really ridiculously over the top ornamentation. Of course, a pipe organ. In 1927, why the heck are you putting in a pipe organ? Especially if you're building it as a movie palace and ballroom. And I guess all in that same year, they were managing to do all the sorts of ornamental work on the ceiling as well. Unless I'm wrong, unless they have a start and a finish date to this, but I couldn't find it. There it is again. Indiana Theater, the Repertory Theater... Here's the Ritz. No, here's the Ritz modern day on its way out, ready for the wrecking ball. Not much more info on that place. On to the Tomlinson Hall. Very high resolution photograph. And give us an idea of the level of detail involved here. Again, are we seeing some sort of eagle here? I'm not sure. Hard to make that one out. Tomlinson Hall. And of course it had a pipe organ as well. And eventually the Tomlinson Hall faced the wrecking ball. Looks like it's in the 60s. Built in 1885, they'll tell us. So it didn't even get a hundred years out of this baby. They had to take it down. Uh, we've jumped to the Union Station. There it is there. We saw it in the beginning of the slideshow. You can see the covered um, area back there for the trains. There's just a couple shots of the interior. Built at a very early time period to 1888, I believe it was. Here we're looking at the Greater Butler College see some of the structures here. This again is that same building we saw as an orphan asylum. 
and another st massive structure here. They're calling this a Northwestern Christian University. I couldn't find anything else on this. I really wanted to find something a little bit crisper, but I couldn't find it. All right, we have a university building like so many other university buildings. I've, I've said this before about universities. Um, definitely old world buildings, clusters of old world buildings that have been repurposed uh, into universities. Eventually they get torn down and rebuilt into the steel and glass of modern day, and sometimes they'll hold on to one or two structures. 1917 to 1919, World War I Memorial, Victory Arch, I call it here. And here is the memorial. Brought it up briefly at the beginning. Of course, we get the cathedral in the background here. The nice church in the foreground. Really spectacular city. So much to offer. You really see it modern day. It's a two year time period 27 to 29. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, only one construction photo. I'm not sure why they wouldn't be documenting the building in any way. Well, this might tell us something. Let's take a look at the interior, though. Two-year time period, remember? I remember all the other things going on as well. Here's the eagle with the spread, spread wings. Some granite columns. Coffered ceiling with columns all the way around. World War One, World War Memorial. Hmm. It's like almost like an homage to the narrative. Feels that way. Repurposed in an homage to the narrative. There you have the lions facing each other, and the massive door, which we'll see moving forward. Close-up look at the ceiling. Is that all tin work? What is this made of? Is this painted wood, painted plaster? What do we think that is? What do we know that is? Anyone? There's those front doors, and these are these are massive. I found a picture of somebody who was about halfway up, so we're looking at 15-foot doors here. Massive doors. Okay, what do you think? That that concludes our file on Indianapolis. Uh, that one really knocked my socks off, I don't know about you. Like I said, if you enjoy these videos, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.